Fans, we are live once again on the Cheap Heat Productions Wrestling Podcast, the much-anticipated festive edition, as you can see by Mr. Maurice and Santa Mancini, of the Mario Mancini Show, which we're entitling Year-End Miracle on 69th Street. My name is Jack Kilby, Executive Vice President of Great North Wrestling. And to kick everything off, we're going to shoot it right now to the, the man who is Mr. Cheap Heat and who is carrying the festive season on his massive, massive back, Mr. Mario Shorto. Mario, how are you, sir? Mario Short. I'm great, guys. But look, <clears throat> it's the end of another year, and I have to thank you two gentlemen, the real stars of the show, Mr. Views Mancini and Mr. Research Jack Kilby. So just want to get that out of the way firstly. Nobody, no, I don't get any views. Nobody watches me, so called. Um, uh, I don't get any views. <laughs> Listen, um, I enjoy it's only Mario, Mario, it's only those two porn stars that are still above you on the, uh, on the podcast. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, I, 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 um, you know, I, I enjoy doing the show. Um, I don't, I don't do any other shows. Maurice will tell you that I get offers to do other podcasts and I shoot it to him. And um, he lets me know the legitimacy of, of, of everything. The only other podcast I've done other than this was um, Hannibal. So, and, and, you know, I love doing Hannibal. Uh, so, you know, I really appreciate this podcast. I, I do would like to go i would like to go into 2024 only because of chemistry i know a question came up prior to us going on the air about what happened to maintaining maintaining the truth with paul roma and um i just want people to know that we do have something in mind um for 2024 uh uh, uh, a a podcast on YouTube with with Roma and myself. Um, the name of it, I I actually came. Somebody actually, you know, it's kind of like what you guys do. So, the law firm I I I, I work in, it you know, Nick is the head attorney there, and and I've been there for twenty eight years, and within that twenty eight years, you know. Nick obviously has met Roma. Roma's been to a couple of theme parties that that Nick has thrown. And um, you know, when when lay people approach Roma, they have specific questions for him. So, you know, every time Nick sees Roma, he's like, Hey Roma, what do you think about eating uh preparing your chicken this way? And hey Roma, what if I turn my wrist this way when I'm doing biceps? And hey Roma, what you know, it's always those kind of questions. So that was in my head, and I kept going. I went, well, what if we named it Hey Roma? <laughs> the podcast Hey Roma. <laughs> so, um, I've got a name. I've got a name for you, Mario, that you could use. The that? Mario Mancini Show featuring Paul Roma. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, it's 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 no uh, it's no secret um how close Roman and I are you know 2024 is coming I put my hand in his hand and met him for the first time in December of 84 so um you know along with operating Paradise Alley together we'd like to go into this venture if we could I, I you know hopefully we can we can do it soon so um and it's it, the only thing is it, it leaves me open um it leaves me open to still do this podcast because um, Roma and I are huge supporters of our, our veterans, a uh, huge supporter of the current military. Uh, a lot of times he likes talking about our veterans, having veterans on shows, not necessarily about professional wrestling. So um, it's a, it, it'll be about anything. So that might keep you. It make you, might keep you safe there, Maurice. So, um, I I want to state that 
I, I've never watched much of CM Punk. Um, I've never seen him wrestle. That might make me a little outdated and a little out of touch. I realize that. Um, I, I, I'm a little slighted because, Tony, uh, you know, Tony Atlas and I are so close. And I think he had a run in with Tony Atlas at one time in the That's dressing good. room. And, um, you know, I love Tony and I respect Tony as, as, um, w one of my mentors who, who was kind enough to take me under his wing when I went to the WWF and, and, and befriend me and be nice to me, um, and treated me on his level instead of a jobber. He was one of those guys. So I'm not usually the association guy. Well, Jack hates him. I hate him. You know what I mean? He's, I'm usually not that guy. I'm, I'm more like that, but you know, knowing to Tony is very unoffensive, you know what I mean? He's, he'll do anything to help anybody. So that kind of, you know, but, um, I guess it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is, it's a big deal. Nobody wants to elaborate on that or anything. It's the is, booze is already issue, getting to you. Is this issue with uh, Tony Atlas. Is that what you mean, Mario? Or the podcast. <clears throat> no, what I'm saying is, CM Punk's return seems to be a very big deal. Oh, oh. yes, yes. It's the the talk of the uh, the dirt sheet and uh, IWC world for sure. One hundred percent. It's the highest the the highest viewed clip ever on social media that the WWE have put out there. See, that's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for right there. I'm looking for that Maurice magic, that Maurice Christmas magic that that he has all <laughs> that knowledge. You know what I mean? Um, so I, you know, I wish him well, uh, I don't know how hard it is for him to come back after 10 years. Um, it's going to hurt, you know, it hurts. Uh, uh, maybe he was gone from the WWE for 10 years. Was he active within those 10 years? Well, That's he had a UFC hurt. role. He had a, he yeah. had a UFC yeah. role as well. So. Yeah. It, it's going to hurt. He's going to have to get used to that stuff all over again. So it's like, you know, I was at the wrestling school. Monday and Tuesday, I teach Monday and Tuesday. And um, I had mentioned Jack. Um, I was talking to one of the students, and uh, they're like, you, you, you swear you're never going to wrestle again? I go, well, I kind of made a commitment in Canada that I'm going to put the trunks on and go in there. And I go, it, it, it's... it's uh, a gentleman that that is uh, well respected in the wrestling business, a, a one of those better than top notch promoters. I said, and I don't really, I, I don't want to let him down. I go, it's bad enough. I got to walk to the ring, in one of his shows. I put <laughs> <laughs> the guy down. Um, Nikki Duke is 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 more than excited. I I, I told her, I, you know, I wanted to bring her along, um, and. Um, she is so pumped up. Nikki Duke is such such a good kid, and she's such a good talent. Um, you know, and, and she's she's great to have in the dressing room, and and she's just one of those humble, very sweet, willing to help. He, she's there for your company. She's not there for herself. You know, she's there for professional wrestling as a whole, and that's kind of old school because we were all were there for the business and for the company. What was the best for the company? Um, you know, uh, not, geez, can you open up the door real quick? Open it. Yeah, the back door. Um, no, the back door. Try to catch him for me. So, um, it's like, you, you know, she's a really good person to have there. Ro I'm, I'm going to try to convince Roma to come. Mm. That's going to have to be a, a conversation with Jack and Roma, <laughs> but I'd hate to go there without him. So mm -hmm. hopefully something could be worked out there because Jack, I'll tell you on the air, um, I'll tell you to your face and on the air that I really don't care. So as far as whatever draw you're going to have that night, um, you know, w w whatever travel, travel is enough, you know what it means? But whatever draw you're going to have that night, whatever happens that, that night, it's all good with me. I have no I have no set price. I have. I don't have that. Oh shit! Scott, your promoter is watching. Your promoter ask, is just in the ask, house. Ask Scott Wilder. Ask Scott Wilder. <laughs> I just said ask Scott say Wilder. Those things. He popped on. Is is he out there? I didn't see anything. 
All right. Um, so, um, who's that coming for you that you're looking for? Is it the ghost of? No, uh, it's, my, it's, 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 it's my it's my it's my um it's my TV guy. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll keep, I, I'll just, keep just it. after the after the last show, and then you said back door. I was just like, oh. No, 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 yeah, no. It was my TV guy. I'll keep it safe and say I'll, it's my TV guy. So, um, so, uh, ask, yeah. I, just when I said ask Scott Wilder, he popped right on. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of shows I do for Scott Wilder where I, you know, I, it, I, we kind of laugh, put our arms around each other, you know, kind of walk and laugh and go, well, I had fun, <laughs> because either it's there or it's not. You know what I mean? Either it's there or it's not. So, um, yeah, I I like the... Um, <laughs> uh, 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 oh! <laughs> Do, uh, all right, Mario, I, I did the deal with Jack. One for you, one, two, three for me. Two for you, three, four, five, six for me. That... <laughs> the legends are, the legends are rolling in tonight. They're the legends. legends. Listen, Speaking of a, legend, here you go. Oh, see, back to back, too. Two gentlemen that, that you couldn't find better human beings on the face of this earth, one being the Guardian of Chaos Big Daddy and the other one being Brian Costello. So um, that'd be funny to get Costello. To, he won't go to Canada. There's no way Costello will go to Canada. There's no Why not? Way. There won't be snow. I don't know. I, it's in May. I don't know, man. There won't I don't, be snow, listen, for sure. Listen, Costello, Costello, you got to uh, listen. You got to be in. You got to be in with Costello. If you're not in, you're out. I, you know what? Costello is kind of like Andre the Giant. He just keeps a very small circle, very, very small. And if you're not in that circle, you're not in that circle. So we'll he's working it, on it then. Yeah, he just really, he's an extremely private individual. So, but it, it, a fantastic, fantastic Scott, guy. Scott wants, Scott to, go wants to go. Scott wants to go. Scott, you want to go to Canada? You'll get the trans and everything going. <laughs> Someone sees the dollar signs. Scott, we, we have to see how we're going to go. Um, we got to see how we're going to go. I, my my deal isn't exactly hopping in the car and going. So I we got to see how we're gonna it's we're gonna just over the border, Mario. No problem whatsoever. It's an easy first, drive. First you class. First right. class. Well, how yeah. many hours is it from uh, New Jersey? No, not from New Jersey. From Connecticut. Okay, from Connecticut. Okay, somebody was from New Jersey recently. All right, so it's two and a half from New Jersey. Add two and a half onto it. Yeah, it's a give or take uh, five, but it's a pleasant drive. Five hours. Well, give or take, four hours, give or take, five, four or five, depending on traffic. Actually, you know what? Let me punch it in. Hold on one sec. Just a second. So who are you, you hoping know? to face in Canada, Mario? Oh, I don't care. I'll job out to anybody Jack puts me to. I don't care. No, no, no. We got bigger plans than that. Don't well, worry. listen, that's what I do, though. Listen, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, or else it's not, it's not pure. You can't, you can't take a, a, a professional wrestler that made a career out of counting. Wow, this particular arena has how many lights are those? I think they got about sixteen lights up there above the ring. You can't take a guy who made a living with his back uh, 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 on the canvas, looking at all the the lights on the ceiling, and you can't you can't turn them into you know whatever you, you know what I, mean? you, I i have to take i have to stay true to who i am so when i when i job out they go well that's what else is new what i what i hear in wrestling, <laughs> Mario, what i hear in wrestling what i hear in wrestling on prime time wrestling every week now is about finishing your story what better way to finish your story than winning at the very end in your last match oh wow you know uh, i i um See, look at what Costello is saying. I would see that I'm undefeated at Clash. That's right. I, I, I have to, I have to respect the IAW and and keep my streak going. I guess. It's the Mario stop. You're killing the payday. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I'd like to bring to Canada with me? 
is the guardian of chaos, Big Daddy. Let me tell you something. Uh, <clears throat> to put those that the, those those boa feathers around around his. Uh, around his neck again, and those glasses on his face, and him getting that crowd going once more, man, that would be something. But I have a feeling that here's another tremendous human being, man, talented guy, Rick Del Santo, the professor he's called, big, big wrestling guy. He's got a brain for the business, really, really good guy, great family guy, too. Um, I got a feeling Big Daddy won't step foot off of American soil, though. That, but that that shouldn't include Canada. Like, like, all right. So, so there was this guy on TikTok, right? And and he he lives in a two point four million dollar house. He started in two thousand sixteen at one hundred and fifty pounds. He's now four hundred pounds. He got to be four hundred pounds because he ate his way there on TikTok videos. And he's probably the top five creators on TikTok. So I'm driving in the car and I'm like, man. And it just hit me. It just hit me out of nowhere. So I, I hit the record button and I sang a song and I put hashtag the singing wrestler. And I've made probably, I don't know, a couple dozen videos by now. Jack, do you know I got an inbox? Legit, Maurice checked it out. I got an inbox from Don't Forget the Lyrics on Fox TV. And said, I heard now. that, and we were going to ask about that. So fill us in here. This is yeah. big news, and it's exclusive news to this podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they, they, this, this person, this woman got a hold of me and said, we want you to, we want you to, on the show. She goes, you're going to have to go through auditions. And I was very honest. I said, listen, she goes, I, I, I think you would be tremendous on the show. You got to make it through auditions. I said, I won't make it. I won't make it. And she said, why do you say that? I go, because if you pay attention to the singing wrestler, the singing wrestler knows all the lyrics from some 60s, 70s, and all the 80s, couple 90s. You go, like, I watched, my daughter and I watched, like, four episodes last night. I'm dead. I'm dead at, like, 50 or 75,000 because they have love songs. I got it nailed. 80s, I got it nailed. Okay? Um... Movie themes, I got it nailed. But then when they have 2010 and they had Taylor Swift on their Taylor Swift songs, it's like, bye. <laughs> See you later. Is it, I'm out. Mario, bye bye. Mario, what way what way did they select the songs? Is it random or what way it, does it, it work? It, 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 yeah, it is. So so what happens is you you go on there and there's 10 categories. So say you pick love songs. So you get two songs to pick from. So one might be, um, say it's um, if ever you're in my arms again, and then they have, um, you know, um, I can't help falling in love by Elvis Presley. You got to pick one of them. In fact, they had a whole Elvis category that I was dying for somebody to pick because my brother is Elvis Presley, or he thinks he is. I, my brother that's 12 years older than me who paid for my wrestling school. Um, he's the biggest Elvis fan you'll ever see in your life. And I grew up with Elvis and, it, you know, just constantly Elvis Presley constantly. So, um, you know, I know a lot, of, a ton of Elvis music and I'm like, pick Elvis, pick Elvis. But, you know, I was frustrated because two categories came up last night. One, one song was, um, I would do anything for, uh, for love by meatloaf. And I'm like, oh my, oh, forget it. I, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to nail that like crazy. So, but then they have other categories like 2010 Taylor Swift or Lady Gaga or Avril Lavigne. I'm like, no way. So, okay, but here's the thing you're forgetting. You're going to be a draw. You're going to, you're going to bring eyeballs to the product. You got this great wrestler scene, wrestler gimmick. Don't you think they're going to work it? You're, well, you're well, acting like the shoot. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, I mean, um, your backstory you know, the, would be incredible for them to have on the show. Well, the thing, well, that's what she said. She said, I watched, I, I watched a few of your matches, you know, so I, I watched a few of your matches, um, which you're right. It makes, and I did mention to my daughter last night because there was a slam dunk song and they're like, 
I just don't know if those, but you know, she'll say, I need five lyrics on this song. So you sing the song and you're singing along and all of a sudden it goes blank, 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 blank. And you got to fill in those lyrics and they're going, I just don't know if they're the, I'm like, that's a work. That's a work right there. They're, they're, they're milking it. Oh, the Undertaker's taking them again. Oh, oh your sound lost, is gone. You lost your volume, sir. The singing wrestler has lost his voice. Oh, no. The singing wrestler has lost his voice. Mario, maybe go in and out, bro. You're, uh, you're mute now. Still mute. Technology. We haven't even gotten to the uh, to the main part here. Okay, maybe he's going to reset. He was on mute. Now he's not. Hello. No. Just just go out with the whole thing. Yeah. That's Isn't that weird talking. how that happens uh, to Mario when he gets a call or a text or something like it that? Seems, it's, it seems like I don't use my phone, but it seems like when you get a proper phone call, that it'll just knock it off altogether. Mm -hmm. um, he should be back in a second. And um, here he is. Here. There you go. There we so, go. So, so I you're don't know talking. It might be a work. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if it's a work. Are they going to say we're going to work you up until 150? I, I don't know. I don't know if they do that. I have no idea. Um. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> it's probably more major TV companies trying to get in touch with him. I agree. We should maybe uh, mention that we're uh, in the Christmas spirit, uh, imbibing a little bit uh, of the adult beverages for you, Maurice. You do the you do your intro. Yeah. It's, it it's looks kind like of a, uh, Jameson, sir. Jameson, yeah. It's more of a more of a chill back show tonight, anyway. Roger, and I have mm. the Sandbanks Baco Noir Reserve from the wonderful Picton area. Oh, oh, the oh, show the Bit of Bailey's. From Didn't the, want to show it a little bit. Well, they, they won't see this, I, I doubt, anyway. So from the wonderful Picton uh, Brewing area, they do uh, wine and they do uh, beer and they do several spirits. So it's uh, quite a, a burgeoning area and local industry here in eastern Ontario. But Mario, I guess, is still coming back. Did you want to kind of run we we've only actually got into the tv show deal we haven't got into some of the other topics did you want to hit uh start maybe perhaps the cheap heat uh, productions uh year in review yeah these are these are really short like but these are pretty much like from month to month like what happened um oh, so in oh, january sixty thousand sixty thousand views oh he's back okay okay we got you bro it's the job um, so I, you know, I don't know the, it, it, the thing is, which got Maurice excited, which I felt bad about was there was a catch and I said, okay, when, when's this, when's the show taping? And she goes, you know, January 19th to the 27th, but we're taping in Ireland. I said, 50 States, you got to be taping in Ireland. Yeah. In Dublin. Yeah. So I said, I, 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 you know, I, I said, yeah conversation and she said okay well, you're number one on the list number one person i'm gonna call um when we tape in los angeles or new york so um i'm gonna have i'm gonna wait until they tape in los angeles or new york and then and then hopefully i can get through auditions now you guys disappeared i think you've had some dodgy connection there we're still here you guys there? Yes, sir. Can you still see us, hear us? Uh, Hello? Hello, we're still here. Maybe we'll try you to come. There we go, back in and back out again. He's having some so, issues, and, and we can't let him this. go without getting an update on the, uh, the Facebook dating process. It's it's the phone. It's the phone. That's the problem. It's the phone. Oh, here so we go. So January, <clears throat> I'll take I'll pop into January. Sixty thousand views in January. Oh, here he's come back again. 
Are you back, sir? Can we hear you? That was really weird. That was really weird. So anyway, we had a conversation, and we're you know if it if um, they tape in New York, they tape in New York or, or in Los Angeles. So um, I'm gonna wait for them. As much as I would have loved to go to Ireland, um, especially to see Maurice, I'm gonna wait until um, they tape in New York. And she said I'm the to- I'm on the top of her hit list. So I'm just gonna keep doing the singing wrestler on uh, on TikTok and. Um, you know, nobody, no, it's amazing. Nobody has come on and <laughs> said, you suck yet. Stop doing this. No, you know what I mean? So I, I, it's amazing. Nobody has, because it's sometimes I listen to myself and I go, I missed that note. Were so, they, Mario, uh, were, were they going to pay for your flights and your, your accommodation? Oh, I assume, yeah. I assume the flight, the flight, the hotel, the, probably, um, it's all day taping. They probably, it's probably catered or they give you a per diem or whatever, whatever it's. Yeah. I mean, it's a very popular show. Um, I would love to do it. Um, I just don't know how far I can go. I, I there's no way I'm going to get to them. I I'm assuming when you get to the million dollar song, you have to, you probably have to fill in 10 lyrics. Um, you know, so w- w- the strategy for me is if there's six out of ten categories there that I know I can nail, uh, Maurice, it's not in Ireland. What do you mean it's not in Ireland? You can't watch it. No, I, I've never seen the show. It may, it may be on over here, but it, I don't watch a lot of TV. Oh yeah, so if I hit six out of ten car- categories, I'd be happy. Um, I just, you know, there's there. It, it would have to be it. Ha- it would have to be a really, really big gift. I mean, all ten categories would have to be something that I know. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, I'm I'm trying to put together a pretty big show uh, on April thirteenth um, at the JCC in Woodbridge. I have um, I have Danny Moff coming to that show. Holiday. Um, Nikki Duke, um, Bull James, um, a guy named Brian, Brian Malonis. Um, I'm, I'm trying, I wanted to get, um, Hammerstone, but Hammerstone is, is booked. Uh, so, uh, it's funny because I went to Google, Google, it was weird. Uh, I went to Google something the other day and Holiday was the, the lead story on Google. <laughs> says Holiday reaches an agreement with MLW and he was in the wrestling school Monday night. I go, and I told him the story. He was the lead story. He goes, oh, that's pretty cool. I go, you're reaching an agreement with MLW. He goes, no. <laughs> I go, no. He goes, no. So I guess it's a one, oh, it's it's uh, a, a parent's, uh, a per appearance agreement. It's not a contract. It's just a per appearance agreement with uh, MLW. So, um, you know, holidays doing well. Thank God, and um, things are moving along for him. So, any news on Vince McMahon? I haven't heard, seen, or anything of him lately. Not much. He seems to be taking a, a back seat. Sold off some more shares, didn't he, Jack? Yeah, and there was some uh, indication that uh, the consortium uh, looked at some of his uh, ongoing issues, both civilly and and criminally, and and thought that he uh, a statement I believe was made something to the effect that uh, you know his his position may be not uh, to the advantage of the the consortium shareholders, and that kind of dropped like a, like a bomb. And then there, there's that was about probably five, six weeks ago, and there's there's been not much news at all on his uh, position within the company. He he went on holiday with the uh, with the Undertaker over to Saudi Arabia to see some boxing matches recently. He's he has a walking I, I, stick. I, I did see that. Well, well, they had, he had a walking stick. People are saying, "Oh, look how old." Somebody popped in and said, "Hey, everybody, calm down. He just had back surgery or something." So, um. You know, you know what I would have said last year, 
but I, I really think since he, he got the UFC involved and so many other people have so many, so much more at stake that he might've, he might've really stepped down. Um, yeah. so or at least pulled back. So yeah. guardian of chaos is asking any thoughts on the Von Eric's iron claw movie. And the sons of Kevin coming to AEW. Don't well, I haven't seen I, I haven't seen the movie yet. I, I, Lord knows I've seen enough documentaries on that poor family. Um, and I, I, I I'm assuming it's just going to be another movie about that poor family. You know, um, very unfortunate. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. MJF is in it. Uh, I, I'm just assuming that it's going to be a really good movie. Um, and the only thing I could say about, about the Von Erichs coming to AEW is I hope they prosper. I hope they prosper and I hope they're happy. I hope they're happy in their heart and in their minds. And I hope they're positive and I hope they don't have the same disease. You know, I hope they're happy human beings and I hope they do very well. You know, I hope they do very well. Yeah. If you if you read the news today, <clears throat> a lot of people are saying that AEW AEW sorry are in danger of losing all their TV deals and their thirty four million in the red this year alone. That's wow. Good. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's uh, it, it sounds like a somewhat of a dire financial situation for a normal company, but this is not a normal company. This seems to be uh, one with unlimited resources as for that movie uh yeah definitely looking forward to it mjf it came out this week is only in for a number of uh, seconds basically uh he had a couple of scenes that were cut when he was playing uh in his role of, of uh, lance von eric of course ricky vaughn and uh, i i don't know i'm a little skeptical i've i was a fan of world class big time uh back in the day up until uh you know this this period of time but but uh, it's it's it, the actors that they have cast Jeremy uh, what's his name White as Carrie Von Eric. I, I'd like to see how they how they pull that off because that guy physically is not Carrie Von Eric. So maybe it's just uh, you know someone who's being too critical from a hardcore fan perspective. But and it may get over with a, a mainstream audience. But uh, yeah, it'll be hard to see or interesting to see how they squeeze new uh life out of that uh that topic because there's been so many uh excellent documentaries on it most notably not the wwe release but the independent film heroes of world class uh, which was shot before they tore down the uh, sportatorium yeah mario do we have any update on the dating since last time oh my personal life Hmm. Well, you you started. Well, I, it I, I tell you what, man. I tell you what. I had I had met a really nice woman that I was really really optimistic about. We had a great conversation, um, and uh, we have to talk about Scott to Scott Wilder about that. Um, we had a really great conversation on the phone. Um, I was very enthusiastic about it, and. Um, it just goes to show you that these dating sites are like in today's day and age in 2023. It's, it's so I'm at the wrestling school doing the thing and everything. And I look down at my phone after a couple hours and I, I, I see that she sent me a message. And it said, I'm sorry. I don't want to waste your time. I promised myself. I, I, I swore off Italian men. Um, and my friends did too. I don't want to waste your time. I'm like, you're you're kidding right and she's like no i just don't want to go with another italian man and i have three cats you know so um it, 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 and and you know what it, it, stereotypical italian men the thing with me is I, I was raised by parents that were married for 65 years and they came from that generation and i was like that i'm also a guy that that um i'm not I'm not uh, ashamed to say that I've been through a lot of psychotherapy on relationships, not, not 
you know, on relationships. And I've read a lot of books. Uh, for those of you who have failed relationships, marriages, or anything, a guy that changed my life, his name is David Rico. And I, I read about five books that he's published, and he's an expert on um on relationships and the theories and and um you know it, he'll he'll delve into why people are the way they are if they came from a divorced family a single parent um if they if they experience trauma as a child if they have abandonment issues if you know he goes through how how they're going to be as an adult and and um he's just really really good at this stuff and i read a lot of his stuff so i went from the stereotypical italian man to to not a t stereotypical italian man it's a stereotypical italian guy is is controlling um you know he's a little what we say in italian gabadost is a little hard-headed um he likes things his way the 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 wife is typically the little lady you know not not an equal you know what i mean um he's the provider and he's to be respected as the provider it's just the italian way and 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 my mother always used to say the understand the culture where uh been married three times and uh it's right there on my wikipedia you know i was married for 15 months the first time <laughs> i got married to my my high school sweetheart she was french canadian and um i was married um for nine and a half years to my my second wife she was spanish and i was married for 11 years to my third wife she was german Eng uh, english german um so you know my mother was always on me to marry an italian woman because they understood well in today's day and age that people are modern they don't go by ethnicity anymore or, or the traditional the things of of ethnicity uh, you know what i mean they're just individuals and and what at 57 years old when you're dealing with a 51 52 or 55 year old woman she's already been through the mill and she's already had her experiences good and bad and you know it, it's it, it's at this age it's trying to maneuver around the damage everybody's <laughs> damaged goods right and you're trying to maneuver around the damage to see if you two people could connect to handle each other's damage. So, um, you know, although I will say I'm the best of friends with, with my, my ex-wife and, and, and her husband. Um, when I did that shot for Scott Wilder up at the Mohican sun, it was a card show and Scott is a avid card collector. And, you know, he was there and he came up to the table and we were BSing and everything. I like Scott a lot. He's a good guy. Um, who's married to my ex-wife. So, um, I mean, it, it's functional. It's just people grow apart and they have different philosophies on a real, what a relationship should be and the values inside of that relationship. And that's what you're trying to find out there. You're trying to find somebody with the same values as you. And, and, and you know, so it's, it's pretty, it's pretty difficult. Um, you know, the stereotypical Italian guy I described is one from 1950 and, you know, and, and. 1960 1970 you know you know just put the food on the table gina stop giving you know busting them off on me you know so it's not like that anymore uh italian men aren't like that anymore Ital italian women aren't like that anymore <clears throat> so a lot of you know uh, then again maurice i you know my the first question out of her mouth was all right i i just have to ask you these questions i said the minute we got on the phone i go okay go ahead time to hang up he goes, do you have a job and do you have a car? And I went, uh, yeah. So I actually put on, I, I just revised my, my profile yesterday. And I said, I don't understand why I'm not getting a lot of responses here because I have a job and I have a car. And if you ladies on here have to ask that kind of question, there's no way I should be single. <laughs> but with that, I'll let you guys do your review. Uh, for 2023, I wish everybody happy holidays, um, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, the whole nine yards, man. Um, Mo, if you want to do, um, if you want to do a New Year show, let All me know. Will. Yeah, let me know. That'll be in a couple of weeks. Um, we'll do a New Year show, and um, 
I'll, I'll probably have more time then. I'll make sure whatever dates you give me, I have it absolutely cleared. So uh, we can we can do a um, a show. Maybe maybe um, maybe Big Daddy will be able to make that one, and maybe I'll drag Roma on. You know. Yeah. So let's see. What we so can do. remember three things: job, car, fourteen-inch penis. I got a job in a car. Just and, edit the bio. Edit the bio. And one last thing. Cut it off at 69. <laughs> Cut it off at 69. I got a job and I got a car, Maurice. That a car and a job. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. There we go. From the man himself who always, always has tremendous insight on the human condition. And speaking of uh, insight and whatnot, we we are going to to look at uh, to wind up today. We have a couple things planned. One, uh, which which Maurice, uh, if you want to go ahead now, you can look at the the highlights for. Let let's stop everything for a second and talk about the channel, Cheap Heat Productions. Not only the wrestling podcast, but everything else that that you've been doing and i'm i am very very happy and proud to be a small part of this channel because it's growing and it's due to the hard work that that you have undertaken from day one but if you want to do that uh year in review and look at some of the the highlights etc please well yeah what i'll do is i'll break it down by month and then we'll just kind of have a look at the end and see where we're at 365 days ago to right where we are now so like you came in in was it june or july you came in in july so i have that down in my notes as well don't worry but uh <clears throat> in january see this is why it would have been funny if mario was here my first guest in january was actually just incredible oh and he, and he gave me some insight into the plane right from hell various different things like that the same month then i had uh dangerous danny davis on and reno riggins they were the three notable i'm not going to mention every podcast because there's so many that we do every year so that was that one in february in the on the mario mancini show was a very high viewed one with uh, james ellsworth and that was mm -hmm. the first time mario met james and they're obviously kind of in similar roles in the company in different decades and that was nice uh, it was also the same month where i had riddle's girlfriend um and now they're They've had a child, haven't they? Yeah, I, I they announced on uh, social media, I think within the last week, that they welcomed a, a child. Yeah, so I had her on, and she was kind of given the inside view onto the way she was treated by people online, mostly in the wrestling business, um, just by sour fans really attacking her. Um, so that was in the news. Um, in March, then I had Amy Donald, who you remember from the film Megan. She was only 13. So that was a kind of a interesting one to get over the line because I had to go through her parents to get permission and all this stuff. And I never thought I'd be interviewing someone that was 13, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it was one of the biggest horror movies of the year. So that mm -hmm. was good. Same month, I had Gene Snitsky, and he was great. Like he, he made so much news with the. Uh, he told a story about uh, May Young wanted me to suck her toes for longer and various, various strange things. And he's he's a really nice guy, actually. So I did try to put you in contact with him to do an interview. Um, it did take me quite a while. And I have to send a shout out to uh, Dan Madigan for organizing that one, the director of See No Evil, ex-WWE writer. So he was influential in that. Um, <clears throat> then in April, um, Steve Kern was a big one. Yeah. Uh, Skinner was on the show and halfway through the show I done the spring and put Mario in who was Skinner's first opponent and he didn't have any idea who he was and it was a really fun interaction he's a very nice guy as well in May actually was the highest viewed wrestling podcast this year and it was a man that we're trying to get in contact with again I think he will do it Alex Wright mm -hmm. he told mm -hmm. stories I had him on I showed him the old clips of when Paul Roman was on my show talking about him <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so that was Alex. Then in June, James Ellsworth was in on the Mario Mancini show again. So um, we done that. Um, no, I'm after getting that mixed up. 
you know, Ellsworth was earlier. But anyway, within that space of time with Ellsworth, we had Gilberg on the show as well with Mario. Mm -hmm. Also did not know each other, which was kind of cool. And then later that month, you came in and you've done some great work as well. And then you go into August, we interviewed Ice Train, interviewed Doug Basham when the OVW thing was hot. Uh, Brian Costello, we finally got him on with Mario. In September, then we had that exclusive with John Guillamando, ex WWE photographer, done really well, got in the news. October, we done a show, a crazy show. You remember with Roma, Mancini, and Jose Luis Rivera came in. That was fun. And then you done three parts with Bobby Blaze. We're in the middle of clipping them up at the moment as well. So you'll see some various clips from Bobby's podcast coming up and Ahmed Johnson and a, a actual active member of the WWE, Kevin Patrick as well. I got to interview luckily. I think my Irish connection really helped with that one, but that's mm -hmm. pretty much like the whole year there, but there's loads missing, but there's guys like we talked to like Lou Marconi and who else have we talked to? There's so many guys. I can't even remember. Well, uh, I think, I think Walters, um, God, I could name them all. The, the, the interesting, the interesting facet that, that we've been trying to, you know, capture on there is not to say that there isn't, you know, value in talking to, uh, names, uh, big names, et cetera, et cetera. I've, you know, I've had the, the uh, pleasure through here and, and the Hannibal TV to, you know, speak to a lot of uh, legends, superstars, et cetera. But I, I think the, the aspect of the business that, that you've uh, hit and we continue to uh, explore are those talents that made, uh, you know, a career in the business, but weren't necessarily the national stars, the TV stars, but yet, had a significant presence on television. I'm, I'm thinking most recently of Tommy Angel, and we've, yes, we've got more uh, of those stories to tell of guys that have been, um, for whatever, and girls too, but guys now that have been that have been overlooked in terms of podcasting and, and having their experiences uh, out there. Because I'll tell you, as a fan, and I'm aging myself uh, quite significantly, but as a, as a, <laughs> as a fan that watched that stuff, you know, late eighties, nineties live, especially WCW. I I'm finding the interviews that we're having absolutely fascinating because down to the, almost the last detail, I, you know, instinctively know what they're talking about. And, and it's, it's always good to deviate from the norm in, in some respect. And I've noticed actually, we were talking about this yesterday or the other day, there's some other podcasters that are, uh, picking up on cheap heats lead and, and featuring some of these people. So it's, it's gratifying to give them that platform, tell their stories and also get some credit that these people deserve. Yeah. And the more, the more interviews that these wrestlers and people within the industry do the better. So <clears throat> if we have an exclusive, we've had many exclusive, you'll find them three days later on someone else's podcast. And that's good for them as well. The more people that are telling their stories, the better. Um, what was the other point I was going to make? God, it's gone from my head. It must be my uh, bloviating that. Uh... Ah, what it, what it was, was the year total in, in views. So the year total in views was up 278% from the previous year. So that's huge. So up until now, it's 979,531. So almost a million within the calendar year. So I'd be hoping to obviously better that in 2024. And then subscribers over the last 365 days are, uh, one second now, uh, 1,993. That's up 161%. So it's all going in the right direction, but it's a, it's a long road, this YouTube thing, you know? Well, it's, it's, it's a long road and it's uh, when, when you're talking about pro wrestling, uh, combat sports, uh, you know, horror movies, whatever adult stuff, we're, we're talking a, a, a niche within a niche market. But I think that when you consistently turn out, uh, <laughs> look at Brian. Hey, Brian, did, did, did anyone else contact you about two days later to come on? 
let us know. Not naming any names, but but I think the 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 important part about this is that you and and you know I'll I'll break uh, kayfabe if you will here for a minute when when I got in touch with you and and started uh, discussing becoming a part of the channel. What impressed me about you was much like myself, you're you're not in this to you know make a, a gazillion dollars or or what have you or uh, get signed by WWE or AEW or whatever. You, you're you're doing this because you see value in capturing the the historical record and making sure that that people that may have not had a platform before get one. And I think that's that's laudable, right? That speaks to your values and and the the fact that this is not this is a very genuine program, as you keep saying, just a conversation. I said to you the other day, I see that. <laughs> yeah, um, I said to you, I, I contacted the man that done one promo for WWE um, the other day, and he remained unnamed. Um, he never got the shot in the end, but. I think that there'd be an interesting story behind that because whilst he never appeared in the ring, he appeared on the vignette and he was supposed to be against one of the biggest wrestlers of all time. So hopefully we can mm -hmm. hear his story. Mm -hmm. You know, some people I find in the business, they, some people are done with it and they don't want to talk about it and that's fine. But we have, I have like a load of guests lined up that have agreed to it but we just haven't got the time sorted. Some of these, as you know, the fans may not know this, but it takes a long time to organize some of these. Oh, yeah. Some of these interviews could be scheduled. It could take a year to get them over the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because, you know, a, a number of things. As you said, some people are just done and, uh, you know, don't want to, for whatever reasons they have, relive that experience. Others are very busy. They've they've got other careers, et cetera. Uh, some are technologically not, you know, so so inclined. But there, there's a variety of, of of reasons. But those that that you know, in in their in their mind, in their in their experience, they they realize what they did was special and unique and worthy of being told. They will eventually uh, get in touch with us and and uh, move forward. Do you, do you want to talk about um, some of the upcoming uh, interviews we have in the, the immediate time frame? Yeah. Another thing I actually forgot. We reunited Chris Nelson with Muffy. Yes. Let's not forget that and let that uh, be mistaken. That was a major, major deal and quite hilarious. <laughs> she was such good fun. We might, we might have to get her on again because she told me that she's got stuff to say that hasn't been said, but it just wasn't the right time to do it. So we'll, well wait for her when she, when she wants to do it. We're here for her. Let's, uh, let's definitely do that. D did you want me to uh, hype the uh, immediate ones? Yeah. Yeah. So one that I'm very excited about that I've been uh, one of those ones that, that, that is on the list that is difficult uh, through my own, through my own means or whatnot, but Regardless, we we have the the brother of no gimmicks needed, Chris Candido, one of my favorite all time wrestlers. I mean, I stole his uh, moniker in a in a tribute. Johnny Candido is coming on this show for an extended interview, and that'll be December the eighteenth at five p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is going to be per particularly poignant. Johnny is a just an awesome human being. His stories are 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 quite uh, detailed and encyclopedic, but he will have some comments to make about uh, the sentencing and uh, his experiences with with Sonny. So you're going to want to tune into that live, fans. There'll be uh, questions there taken as well. Then on the 19th, we have a, a unique interview in that uh, WWF former WWF. Referee Kevin Jeffries has agreed to come on and do a career interview. He was a wrestler for Stampede, but was one of the main uh, referees for WWF during that Golden Hogan era. Has many, many stories and uh, quite active in the 
in the uh, wrestling community still with CAC and other other things. And then on the 29th of December, we have uh, a guy coming up that that one of those ones that that has quite a extensive career in the business. He's he's done a lot, uh, including wrestled for Championship Wrestling from Florida, WCW syndication. He faced all manner of uh, stars at the time, but seems like a, a really interesting, uh, genuine individual. His name is Crusher Kampf, and I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but it's K-O-N-P-F. He, he uh, most uh, fans that are familiar with WCW syndication in the early 90s will come across his stuff. Guy who's never, uh, you know, never done a, a major podcast interview Looking forward to that. And we're working, as Marie said, on lining up continual content for the uh, new year. Yeah, there'll be, the, there'll be the niche guys, which we hope to just keep finding. Then there's a few of the more mainstream, we'll call them guys, but they're actually much more difficult to deal with than, than the other guys. But uh, I've got a few people, I'm not going to mention any names, but there's a list of five, six, seven, eight that are there that we just need to sort out a date with. And then obviously I'm going to be doing the, the movie stuff and the band stuff um, in between that as well. And some TV stuff. Um, and that's, that's pretty much the plan going forward. Just kind of keep, we'll be doing minimum two shows a week and um, whether it be live pre-recorded. So it'll work out another 104 shows planned for next year, even though we don't know what they are yet, that's what will happen. And uh, yeah, just keep going on. And I just like to thank everyone for watching. Before we uh, before we end for uh, this particular episode, in addition to uh, echoing uh, Mr. Mancini's comments and wishing everyone out there a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday Season, and thank you for supporting this channel. Maurice, we're, we're going to have some content. I think biggest wrestling stories of the year we can do in the New Year's, uh, the New Year's program, but... Before we go, uh, I'm about to do another show with my partner who was on last week, the Cheap Heat Productions Wrestling Podcast. That would be the Kingpin, Angel Medina. And we're taking a look at, in no particular order, but wrestling and Christmas. They, at one time during the, the territory days, were very synonymous. You know, you had those big shows. Crockett had uh, shows on Christmas Day. Uh, Christmas night, uh, world class had big show. I mean, so many to, and then in the more modern era, we we've had a number of uh, interesting angles and situations on TV. But not to put you on the spot, and we won't go into uh, great detail. But do you have a favorite Christmas-related wrestling angle, memory, moment, show, whatever? Yeah, basically because of my age and the era I grew up watching, it's obviously Stone Cold, Stunner, and Santa Claus on Raw. You know what? That is still the uh, the number one. I did a lot of research for this one, and that is consistently. I mean, there's there's uh, memories across the board, but everybody points to to that particular. Uh, it's because it, it's because it was kind of taboo. The WWE would not do that these days. No, not you know. at all. What what I like to uh, one of the more interesting deep cuts or or not that uh, interests me from the the whole Christmas thing. In addition to um, you know the the great cards uh, that I could run down, but won't is the whole angle with the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase when they brought out Santa Claus or Balls Mahoney <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Million Dollar Man paid him uh, to turn on poor Savio Vega, and he had a, a limited run there, but uh, that was so memorable, I guess. No no disrespect to the late, great Balls Mahoney, but uh, from the, the wrestle crap point of view, that, that was definitely a memorable television at a, a rather low period in that company's history. Interesting, interesting topics for sure. And Kingpin, so, he was great as well. Yes. Yeah. He, uh, he definitely has, uh, he's another one that we're going to have back on. We're also uh, go going to have a number of uh, panel type discussions with some of the regulars that you mentioned, uh, in including Mario Kingpin, 
Uh, and also uh, Bobby Blaze, my friend who did that excellent uh, three-part extensive series on his career. So bottom line, fans, is there's a lot to come from Cheap Heat in 2024. Do you have any uh, final thoughts for this uh, festive uh, holiday episode, Christmas episode? What two final thoughts. Two, two final thoughts. First one is... I think we should get Bobby Blaze and Randy Hogan on the same show. I think they're they would be two very compatible guys together. And then the second one is I know that Mario says he doesn't really like doing many podcasts, but there's one other podcast that I'd like to see Mario on. I would like to see Mario on Cafe de Rene. I think we should make that happen. I think that'd be really good. Absolutely. I, I don't, uh, those fans that follow the Hannibal TV and Great North Wrestling know that I'm not really a big fan of uh, that vicious rule breaker, Rene Dupree, who concussed me with a with a vicious shot that broke my briefcase. The uh, bill's on the way to you, Rene, for that. But you know what? In the interest of uh, broadcast journalism, I would be prepared to put that aside and have, have uh, hopefully grease the the uh, machine to have Mario on that podcast because he certainly would fit in there very well, given their extensive storytelling that they do there. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So isn't it? I guess so. We will uh, fans, we will continue to update you as to shows moving forward. And just uh, from a personal perspective, I want to thank you Maurice for having me, uh, be a part of this channel. I think that uh, you're you're doing fabulous work here, and I'm just glad to be able to contribute in a small way. Yeah, and I'm glad you're here, man. I'm glad. It took me a long time to try find someone you can trust because you know, in this, not everybody's got the work ethic. It's like I was talking to people about bands the other day. You know, you bands members come and go all the time, and it's very hard unless you all have the same focus. It's kind of the same in this, so. That's why I do a lot of my work myself. You know, I do the DJ and I do this, I do that. But I'm glad to have you on board because, like, you've done some work when I've been on holidays, when I've got the kids, different bits and pieces. Because, you know, I can only do selective days per month. And then you can normally fill in then after and really appreciate it, man. Well, more to come in 2024, folks. And until next week, we are done here for another edition of the Cheap Heat Productions wrestling podcast. Take care, everyone.